My name is J.J. Hertog, and I am pleased to have with me Mayumi and our dear associate and colleague, Iris Sumuro and Desiree Hertog. We're discussing a, a very amazing story that was in some ways forecast in the book of Knowledge Keys of Enoch. We're in this most exciting experience I had of being taken to the future. I saw a map of the world with 12 energy spokes of ancient civilization, one of which came through the island area we know as the Ryukos Islands and the area of Yonaguni, made famous by Dr. Kumura here from Okinawa and my associate, Iris Demuro. Uh, Iris, we're very pleased to be with you here in Okinawa, overlooking this magnificent yes. beach property of a historic archeological zone. Please give us a little idea of the, the genesis of the story of how the Temple of Mu came to be. Well, I had heard of the underwater monuments, but I didn't know much about them. And um, Emmy Award winning producer Boris Saeed called me in 1998 and said he had a 10 minute uh, short film of the underwater monuments and he'd be in New York and that I'd like to see them. So, of course, he came over. I was very excited about it, and uh, we formed a huge expedition with um, a variety of well-known people and came out and spent a month uh, filming the underwater monuments, and eventually uh, took, actually, two expeditions. It took two years, and um, we had a showing on the Australian History Channel uh, in, in 2000. As I know, one of the famous underwater photographers in the first phase of the expedition was Vincent Pace, who developed a technology that James Cameron has used in this historic film called Avatar. But you had the great selective power to bring some of the best minds and explorers together. We're very thankful for this, which is now in the English, Japanese, and other languages available in DVD format called The Temple of Mu as we can see here in the other titling, Lemuria, mm -hmm. the name Kimbu and Jimbu are very important in the history of Japan as the fathers of higher teaching given to Mother Earth. And in the story of Yonaguni, we had, shall we say, reports of underwater pyramids, very similar to what we have found in our work in the Near East, in Syria, and also in Mexico, and in Bolivia, of two-tier and three-tier pyramid forms, with staircases very similar to what Dr. Kimura found under the ocean off Yonaguni. I think what's so significant is, I know when this first came out, that people didn't understand how could you have underwater monuments. Yeah, perhaps we're saying maybe it was 2,000, 7,000, 10,000 years ago, but still seemed very strange. But now, of course, with the recent earthquake, you see how the lands can shift here very, very rapidly. And I think this came out in the documentary that it's not unheard of to think that an area could sink, literally, or go beneath the water some, you know, thousands of years ago because of the dramatic change. I think this is very important for our time, too. So this means that people used to live in an area that has shifted and changed, and the civilization still continued. And is this not really, I raised the first glyph that's on the cover of the historic documentary, the fire letter is reaching out really from this particular elongation, meaning the place that is sunken still is speaking a language or teaching even though we have the fires of destruction and construction showing a continuous story. And uh, it's very interesting to note that the monuments are 100 feet underwater, which is uh, 30 meters. Especially now with the cataclysmic changes of Mother Earth, with so many cities about to go under the ocean, if we are to believe the UN Intergovernmental Report, the ocean rises some one meter by mid-century plus, would suggest certain population centers being subjected to oceanic waves. But here we have a positive story of how the people of Yonaguni, a proto-humanity, so to speak, was able to work with water engineering, land ocean systems, and agriculture, architecture, and cosmology, so they had sufficient strength to survive, to adapt to oceanic changes. And I think that's the important story. 
they survived and they made it across the Pacific to the highlands of South America. I think that's really significant. When you look at the building here in the Ryukyu Islands, you see it's very similar to what we find in Peru and Bolivia, mm -hmm. and even some of the legends of Easter Island. So we believe that it's not just the northern route that everyone's always talked about through the Bering Straits and through North America, but from our research in South America, we can date civilizations, or at least people living there, some 30 to 35,000 years ago, and we think that there was a connection between the uh, South Pacific and even this area of the Rukyu over across to South America. You would say the survivors who made it across immortalized their experiences in the actual architecture on some of these mountains, on some of these side temple areas where you see the oceanic waves, and you see the symbols of the turtle, which is very important because Iris, as you showed in the graphics of your documentation, several of the temples have turtle veneers on the top. This could not be made by ocean dynamics. It had to be human oriented, human engineered, as a symbol of, shall we say, ability to build a whole new civilization that was flexible, that could, so we say, support the foundations and changes of Mother Earth. Well, in the beginning, it was very controversial, and Dr. Kimura, who headed the research and is still heading all of the research into these um, types of monuments in that area. Um, Although it was very, very difficult in the beginning, uh, it's, it, the scientific community has turned around now and it's quite credible that all of this happened. And when I dived the site, it was absolutely apparent to me that it was once on land because there were um, carved creeks in, the, in the, the rock formations that could not have possibly been formed underwater. It had to have been on land at one time. And the platforms are absolutely um, horizontal with 90 degree walls coming up from it so and, and turtle formations on top it's really quite amazing and there are other structures that are being discovered right now on Okinawa that have the same qualities I thought it, it, it was important I'm saying this in the past tense that you were able to get together such leading figures like Dr. Oppenheimer from Oxford University Dr. Sandel from the Scripps Institute in La Jolla, California, other key specialists from various parts of the world that gave their interpretation as to the so-called lost continent of Mu and agreed with the findings of Dr. Kumar and others that there was indeed a high probability that this did occur, that the Japanese records, the Chinese records, the records of Okinawa and others were correct in speaking of a motherland and that this basic language structure could be found also in other languages. So I have diagrammed here in a recent book on linguistics that uh, Desiree and I put together showing certain cognates between the Japanese language, the, uh, the Mayan language, the uh, Aramaic, the Hebrew, all of which have flood stories of certain periodic changes, inundations, cataclysmic changes, all this bespeaks a type of cataclysmic geology that the ancients knew of would happen from time to time, that the importance was people knew how to survive. And you find in Lake Titicaca, we were talking about how the connection between Peru and Bolivia and here, people living literally on reed islands, yes, so that right. they can go up or down depending on what happens. I think these are obviously people that have experienced something in the past. Call it the Toro. Word. And of course, this has a, a very important meaning in J Japanese and also in Hebrew, meaning a type of structure or script or place of success or victory, higher teaching of sacred blessing. In any uh, perspective, whether it's from the east going to the west or from the west going to the east, the great discoveries of Yonaguni have brought new meaning to the importance of this book, the Book of Knowledge Keys of Enoch, which would find its way into the schools throughout Japan where people can put together the missing pieces of history and recognize that the future Mother Earth is not one of destruction but one of construction. We're facing a time period now where we're going to have to use new engineering but more importantly a new positive psychology of going to work together as a team yes. to put, shall we say, a method of flow upon a world of flux a form of creation upon a world of chaos, 
recognize, as we have found, and you have seen to this face-to-face, -face, Iris, in your underwater diving, this huge face form that is there at Yonaguni that looks to all of us, recognizing that this is the human face, the face that speaks underneath the waters of creation, that we are alive, that we are well, that our face will not be destroyed with the sands of time, that we will learn the lessons of life and ascend, according to the ancients, into a new sutra or book of life. We I, thank I you. I would make one last request, which is that um, it would be very nice if all of us would open our minds and our hearts and absorb the knowledge that is coming forth right now in a way that is not constricted as it has been in the past and be open to all of these new ideas that are coming forth today. It seems like you know, ancient people knew how to communicate with future people. Why not ask communicating with ancient people and future? Exactly. It sounds like a good idea. <laughs> Thank you. Again, for those who are interested, we highly recommend this documentary, now in a DVD format, The Temple of Mu. It's from our website templeofmoon.com or from the Academy for Future Science .org, worldwide in a variety of languages. We speak to all of you with a smile upon your heart, with your eyes to the heavens, with the ancient expression in the Chinese of Tian'an or in the Greek expression ad astra to the stars. Let us go forward realizing we are the citizens of tomorrow, we are the people of light, we are the citizens of the cosmos. Thank, Thank you. you.